Kiss Denny's Goodbye. Hey everybody, you're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust BX4 back with another dose of economic reality. Do we need to kiss Denny's goodbye? Well, there's a lot of locations closing. We're going to hear about what the CEO is telling us. Uh, will this be a Kmart situation, a, uh, a complete bankruptcy, or will this just be some of the locations closing? Well, there's a lot of different aspects of this. It ties in with the broader economy. It ties in with the rising crime. The rising crime also is a symptom of a weakening economy, uh, specifically the weakness of the U.S. Consumer. So we're going to get into all that today and more. Let's go ahead and get started right here. And this is out of CNBC. As you can see, restaurant CEO's new favorite word is value as they aim to bring back customers. Now, we saw a lot of restaurants nationwide lose business as consumers became more choosy on what they spent money on. A lot of these restaurants raised prices much more than they really had to. Now, of course, their excuse was, oh, we have to pay higher wages, overall inflation, the cost of operating or the cost of doing business. But yet yeah, that was a lot. Of, a lot of it was greed, right? There was much more than just inflation that made these restaurants raise their prices. A big part of it was they saw that the banks were continuing to loan out money, that the credit cards were continuing to uh, get increased credit limits. Consumers look like they could never stop spending, even though people are on record levels of debt right now. Uh, it came out just what a month or two ago that one in five credit cards now are maxed out. So restaurants didn't know how soon this was gonna happen. So of course they just raised their menu prices because if the banks are gonna continue to have a loose monetary policy or loose lending policies when it comes to credit cards, loans, and everything else, why wouldn't you raise your prices? Think about it. If you're a business owner, why wouldn't you raise your prices if you think the consumer is just going to pay no matter what, right? The United States consumer, collectively, we have a big problem. We have a spending problem. We have people out there that are just willing to spend no matter what. If people stop spending on, pick your item, item A, if people stop spending on it, they say enough is enough, prices will come down. If people stop borrowing so much money, no matter where you look, pick pick your market, the housing market, uh, automobiles. Uh, if people say enough is enough, I'm not going to take out this enormous loan. Uh, if everybody does that, then prices will come down. The problem is you have big money investors, global corporations. And then you just have a lot of people that just want it now. The United States, we want it now. We don't want to wait. We're the micro, microwave slash drive through uh, mentality here. We want it right now. ASAP. Give it to me now, right? So let's take a look at here. After reporting lagging restaurant sales this quarter, CEOs are turning to value menus. We talked about McDonald's bringing back their value menu. Many different restaurants. Was it Taco Bell? A few more. Uh, so now Denny's, the same thing. Uh, McDonald's, Burger King, yeah, Taco Bell among the top chains, hoping to bring back customers with value meals. So if we can bring back value menus now, when inflation hasn't come down, it just actually got worse. Think about that. Inflation went higher since these restaurants said they raised their prices because of inflation, right? So now inflation is even higher than what it was back then. But now all of a sudden these restaurants are able to bring back value menus. Just think about that, right? So were they really forced to raise their prices to begin with? Or was it just greed, what many people call greedflation, right? It's obvious. Inflation's higher now than what it was back when the restaurant said we have to raise our prices because of inflation. Fast forward here several months later, a year or two later, since these restaurants started doing that with maybe three years now. And now they can all of a sudden cut their prices, even though inflation hasn't come down. It's just gotten worse. So that proves it right there. The proof's in the pudding, folks. These restaurants were participating in greedflation. So are the car dealerships. So are many businesses. Again, why would you lower your prices if you know people could just swipe the credit card, run up more debt. Uh, if you're a car dealer, people could just take out the loan. Why would you lower your prices, right? You wouldn't. And a lot of this, talking about car dealers for a minute, a lot of the car dealers are sitting on a lot of inventory and they're waiting for that next rate cut because they know when the rate cut happens, rates go down, people can borrow more money. So they're not cutting prices of cars. That's why you see this big disconnect between the wholesale price of cars and what you can actually get from a car dealer, right? Auction prices are coming down. Dealers are paying less for cars now than they did 
just two or three years ago, much less. In some cases, 25 to 45% less, but they're not cutting prices by 25 or 45%. They're barely cutting prices. And that's because they expect the rate cut. They're holding on to this inventory. In some cases, they're getting overflow lots for all their excess inventory. And it's very easy to find lots right now to park your cars at if you're a dealer because you have a lot of vacant uh, business uh, parking lots and vacant business properties that they can just rent out or lease and park all these excess cars, excess inventory, anticipating that rate cut and more purchasing power from the U.S. consumer. Well, I don't think they're really going to get it. I think that in the end, they're going to be sad that they didn't liquidate their inventory while they could because the rate cuts, if it does happen, a quarter, a quarter of a point percent. You think that's really going to bring millions of people pouring back into buying cars? All right. But anyways, back into the uh, restaurant situation in Denny's. I, sorry, I digress there, but it's all connected here. It all ties in here. I like to give you, you know, broad examples, broad, broad, big picture examples. Uh, let's go on over to Denny's. Same thing. Denny's raised their prices. Here's the latest. Denny's closing more restaurants, but will revive its value meal. Another restaurant reviving its value meal. So again, why didn't they revive or why did they take the value menu away? First of all, back when inflation was lower. Another example. So inflation's higher now than when they raised their prices. But now all of a sudden we can lower our prices because our consumers are cutting back on the spending, right? Again, this is obvious. It just reveals what's happening. Uh, 15 Denny's outlets closed from April to June with more closures to come. Denny's CEO says a return of its value menu will help. Um, Denny's has, wow, 1,541 locations, both company and franchise owned. And why don't we look at just a minute at the beautiful breakfast plates being served to these fine folks. And they look pretty happy, don't they? You see that stack of pancakes, right? When I used to eat pancakes, I try to cut back on carbs now, but when I used to eat pancakes, I used to see a stack of like five pancakes and say, yes, I'm going to smother them and serve them. I'm going to eat all the pancakes. By the time I got done with just two pancakes, I was sick of them. I was done. So never order five pancakes. It's <laughs> the moral of the story. But let's talk about what else is happening here. Rising crime? Rising crime affecting Denny's? Let's talk about it. Folks, I'm not even joking. Take a look at this. Denny's closing locations due to crime. So what is it? Dying and dash? More people... Choosing to just leave without paying, kind of like what we're seeing in retail with all the stores closing because of the crime and people stealing things. But what is it? Let's talk about it. Folks, I'm not even joking. I wish I was. Dennis, Dennis, Denny's latest Oakland restaurant closing due to crime. Homelessness also. A second restaurant is shutting down on Hagenberger Road in Oakland and once again blaming the city's rising crime rate. Then he's announced on Wednesday it'll be closing after more than five decades. Wow, five decades. The location is right near the Coliseum Complex. And what kind of crime are they seeing here? Look at this. Look at the sign. This is a sign at Denny's. Do not leave valuables in cars, folks. When the economy starts collapsing and more people are desperate, crime rises, folks. Uh, the restaurant is profitable, but there was a concern for safety of the customer as employees. Increase in car break-ins, robberies, and other crimes. And the last day of business will be March uh, 24th. Then he's released following statement. Quote, closing a restaurant location is never an easy decision or taken lightly. However, the safety and well-being of Denny's team members and valued guests is our top priority. So there you have it. It's not just Oakland either, folks. It's other locations are also closing down because of this. Now, some people may say, and maybe even some of you down in the comments on this channel will say, well, it's a bad area. Uh, that's why they're closing down. Folks, it's been open for 50 something plus years. Why is it just now a bad area? Right? If it's a bad area, why is it getting worse now? And now we have to close or they have to close after 50 years, right? So it's because things are getting worse, right? So a bad area is a bad area. There's always been bad areas, but we're seeing more and more bad areas or the bad areas are expanding right, from just maybe in the city, now throughout the county, throughout the greater metropolitan areas. I can see it in my area, homeless tents now on the outskirts of San Diego, not just in the city, 
but in cities around San Diego, El Cajon, exploding homelessness, uh, homelessness, even North County, down in Chula Vista, South County, homelessness exploding because of the cost of living crisis. And that ties in again with the economy, people's wages, how much everything costs. Here's another one, restaurant dive. Denny's still shrinking. The chain's system has contracted 9% since 2017 and may shrink again in 2024. As the company forecasts, comparable sales growth between 0 and 3%. Another part of it, too, is folks are getting tapped out on their credit cards. We're seeing, even though people still have credit for the most part, one in five cards are maxed out. But for the most part, four out of five still have credit to go. They have credit to spend. But even that group is slowing down. Yes, debt is increasing, but the growth rate or the amount of debt accumulated is slowing down, right? So we're seeing a slowdown. Um, if banks were to cut back on the credit cards, if they were to drop the credit limits or even freeze the credit limits, you would see the economy go over a cliff in a matter of weeks because this whole thing is propped up by new debt, new debt, new debt. It's all propped up on debt, folks. All the economic growth that we've seen over the past 10 to 15 years since the financial crisis has been debt-driven growth debt driven growth it shouldn't even be called growth if it's debt we shouldn't rename that or put it in a positive light that should be a negative thing they should call that degrowth right but no they call it just the opposite it's growth so you taking on debt that's economic growth it's silly but it's true folks sometimes truth is stranger than fiction i wish it wasn't uh so what do you think about this denny's shrinking well, they all go out of business. I don't think so. I think there's over a thousand still. What did we read earlier? A thousand, fifteen hundred locations, something like that. Um, it's going to be a lot of them closing, though. It's already fifty something um, in the latest forecast, but it's likely going to get worse before it gets better, folks. Because why? I'll give you a few seconds to think about the answer to that. Why? Because nothing is being done to address the underlying problem. It goes back to the fiat currency. We're no longer on a gold-backed currency now since 1971. So it's unlimited uh, money creation powers that are gonna just make things get worse. And the next downturn or shutdown or 2022.0 where everything gets shut down or something gets hacked or compromised and the whole system comes down, what's gonna be the solution? More stimulus checks, more spending, drop interest rates. Folks, most of you know this, right? So buckle up, get ready, fasten your seatbelts. We've got a, the next report. It's going to be very important. We're going to talk about the October surprise or what I would call an October shock. And we just have two months. Make sure you're subscribed. Come back. We've got very important topics to cover. And the next one's going to be really, really important. Again, make sure you're subscribed. Keep stacking. As always, everybody, big love. Bye for now. Peace.